welcome to my channel IT Smart Training hope you all are well today I am going to start Amazon Web Service uh, new training video if my video is informative please like and share definitely subscribe my channel to get new technological video update which makes you IT Smart so let's start uh, introductions of AWS services in this video we are going to talk about AWS basic services so if you are not familiar with uh, Amazon Web Service and you don't know much about AWS services so this video is for you okay so before starting this video tutorial you have to understand few things about AWS first is AWS is a global data center so whenever we will be using some AWS services typically we will deploy it some in our geographical area now the geographical area is called AWS regions like in across the world there are different AWS regions available for us when you deploy services we can choose which region we need to deploy in now every region further is come uh, comprised of uh, typically two or more uh, data centers that for high availability of AWS services and those data centers are called availability zone we will learn more about it shortly also as in AWS global data centers there are something called edge locations now edge locations are something like you can consider it like an caching caching devices which are the across 100 plus cities across in the world and your content like your media videos and pictures what you watch maybe on Facebook or a YouTube they get cached or to your nearest location and from there it is delivered to the user so it is basically improves the performance by lowering the latency and network latency which gives you more flexible view or low latency view of your videos or your pictures okay so as I said region is a geographical area here the blue area you can see you can see the blue area this blue area is called region and every region consists of typically two or more availability zone for high availability for your applications so here you can see there I there is configured three availability zone is here and each availability zone are well connected with the fiber connectivity it is a high bandwidth connectivity when you design your architecture typically you will keep your machines in a different availability zone so that if one availability zone goes down for some reason you have your machines running to another availability zone and your application then have the high availability suppose my applications is running on availability zone 1 due to some circumstances some fire incidents or something like that my availability zone 1 is going down so I can get my application from another availability zone in this region 
this is called high availability so you have to configure this high availability for your region I hope the region and the availability zone you are familiar with now hope the region and the availability zone concept is clear to you so let's move ahead now I want to talk about AWS services so before that I just quick overview of how these services regions and availability zones really mapped with each other so first thing if you have an AWS account the AWS account is a top level entity you can see that AWS account is a top level entity I just configured here a, a, a hierarchy where AWS account regions and AZs, AZs are uh, mentioned here so AWS account is a top level entity that means once uh, you have an AWS account you can deploy your infrastructure in any AWS region okay in any AWS region so as I said there are more than 20 to 24 regions as of now and very and every regions therefore two or more AZs are there that shown here now in AWS there are different services they have different scope with respect to the regions or AZs or account level say for an example billing service billing service works at an account level entity this billing service works on account level entity that means at the end of the month you get one AWS bill which you have to pay I am which is identity and access management IAM next is IAM identity and access management which is also works on a global level it is also a top level entity AWS IAM means how many users you can create you can create that all these users would have access to all AWS regions and AZs and the services because they work globally suppose I create a user u1 in an account level so that u1 I can access every region I configured as well as the AZs also inside the region globally right there are more talk about uh, this shortly and then some other services like S3, DynamoDB they work in a regional level that means when you create a S3 bucket you select in which region you want to create that S3 bucket right similarly the DynamoDB tables so there are further service like uh, EC2 which is uh, for VM service VM or EC2 uh, service uh, virtual machine service RDS for database service EBS elastic block storage like a disk all these work are AZ level the scope of this service is one is to one that means one AZ to use for an instance it cannot be created in two AZs at the same time it will be either in AZ1 or a AZ2 or a AZ3 depending on where you are launching that machine same with the database and disk also I would like to take some example and then so that 
you can map really how the service fits into the some architecture and that probably would you help you okay with this what I want to do the next is I want to build one applications okay and we will see how to create the same architecture using AWS so what we want to do is now to understand uh, different AWS services where they fit into any architecture we want to build a simple social media applications maybe mini version of Facebook or an Instagram and then we will see how to design the same architecture using the different AWS services okay so our application is fb.com for example our user will access it using this name so first thing if you want to deploy these applications or in your uh, on-premises data centers then the first thing you will need is one private network first private network you need the private network first like every company has their private network we would also require something like this to make it secure next thing we required is a web server now to start with suppose we are a, a startup then we will probably build a small code it may be in PHP or some other language and we will uh, run in some kind of application server or a web server and it should work maybe for at least 100 users or lower them and it works fine our user will access these applications using IP address initially so maybe this VM have some public IP address to access the user so the users can access that VM through this public IP address or the website should be accessible by the public IP address now what happens over the time is like uh, you want to now extend your applications and you want to add some business logic into it some UI stuff over here some login functionality you want to add and so many features you want to add in these applications so for that where you need the web server as well as you need an application server web server is for font and stuff and need an application server but main website is uh, hosted uh, in the web server this is a font end and other stuff taken care by like uh, business logic or something like that uh, that are hosted into the application server and of course if you want to extend it in uh, uh, if you want to extend it and now some kind of uh, database like relational database or a MySQL database uh, and even you can uh, have an Oracle whatever you prefer you can you just uh, deploy it in your infrastructure so in my infrastructure I just uh, uh, deploy here a relational database So this infrastructure is actually called a three-tier infrastructure and your users are using this application using IP address so this works well till now and considering the app is really uh, doing good and your website is really doing good as of now but at the time being there is more users are involved in your web server and sometimes then web servers 
or an application server becomes a bottleneck because sub, uh, day by day the user increasing the user limit to access your web server so it's maybe your web servers may be bottleneck or your application should be bottleneck application server should be bottleneck maybe they are not able to handle the increased load of your applications so what is the solutions for that typically we will scale now okay so a scaling can happen over here there are two types of scaling are available one is called a vertical scaling another is called a horizontal case scaling vertical scaling means you increase the capacity of the machines suppose you uh, just increase the RAM increase the storage increase the CPU power it actually the capacity you just increase the capacity of the machine but basically uh, in three tier architecture uh, we see uh, the horizontal scaling is uh, preferable to deploy so that means you can bring more web servers or more applications servers right like app like I have shown here so we have to increase the servers okay that's fine now I have a multiple uh, web servers and multiple application server but as you know there are multiple web server that means there are multiple IP address are involved and now is a time where we need an intelligent who can really distribute the load these web service and that intelligent service is called load balancer so if you heard about load balancer like HA proxy and nginx they are do something like this for user when user hits the request to the load balancer then and then uh, a, a eventually uh, then then uh, uh, the distributed uh, load are then and then the load balancer distributed total number of load to uh, divided into multiple servers backend server multiple backend servers so if you have uh, uh, I just uh, suppose uh, that uh, 10 uh, connections are uh, hit into the load balancer the load balancer will equally or unequally uh, which I set over the load balancer that is uh, distributed to the packet server now typically you don't want your applications to be accessed using this IP address people want to access the applications via domain name something called fb.com and for that you have to deploy the DNS service into your infrastructure who can manage the name resolution for user okay so far so this is what this is what fine you are now having a lot of data say you have a number of frames are going number of connections are going number of posts are going uh, and that's why uh, the relational database cannot really solve this kind of problem maybe data storing data data storing you cannot do that relational database at that time for this you need a scalable database and also for the connection informations and all it makes sense to rather going for no SQL database so what you do what you will do to bring a no SQL database like MongoDB or Cassandra anything that you can want to have 
so some part of your data is stored in a relational database and other is stored in the non-relational database or a NoSQL database but still your relational database could be perform a bottleneck after deploying this your relational database could be bottleneck maybe there is a very read heavy applications happening in the database and for that typically you will bring in one more component which will called database caches okay so you bring in uh, some database caching like redis or memcached it will uh, where you can uh, query the frequently access data so that uh, your application servers don't hit the database but all the requests are served from this caching engine okay next uh, so this is clearly better architecture what you what we saw over here now next thing as you know Facebook might be getting millions of picture uploaded daily and this videos are uploaded every day the disk which is which is attached to the VM are not really capable to extending their size they have some size limitations and that's why all the media and pictures are never stored typically on these web servers or the application server for this you need some unlimited kind of storage or an external storage and it should not be necessarily block storage like your disk it should not be block storage like your disk it can be a file storage like shared file system or something an external storage like a Google Drive if you are aware of this you need some external storage where you store this information so that makes your storage and that uh, solves your storage capacity problem so here I deploy some external storage for that if you use external storage that's fine so far so good no problem over here so now next what happened is when you upload videos and photos you need some kind of content filters like maybe you are uploading videos and that videos are some content which are objectable or there are some pictures which has some nudity uh, so you need some content filter mechanism to protect this we have some content filter mechanism to protect this so I uh, deploy here a content filtering okay that's fine so now you also know Facebook also throws a lots of ads and it is continuously watching what activities you are doing on while you are on Facebook and when you are uh, logging your Facebook and what you are doing in Facebook page maybe what products you, ca you are liking and what kind of post you are uh, liking and based on that it gives you the suggestions and the friend request will throw a lot of ads right so this is called click stream analysis every click is getting captured somewhere and it is getting analyzed in a real time so you need some kind of click stream analysis engine there so this click stream analysis uh, on Facebook you just is just uh, uh, analyze the data where you are clicking and suggest you your friend uh, suggested friend request and you just uh, show you some uh, suggested uh, videos over your wall something like this 
now all this data what is what this click stream analysis click stream analysis engine captures it has to be stored somewhere so this data is stored in some external storage and you need some external storage for this like this storage we are storing the data which is uh, captured by clickstream analysis and further you want to take this data and do some data operation like you need to run some aggregations you need to short your data and you need to find some meaning out of the data and that's where you need some kind of Hadoop platform which can perform and capturing the distributed system right so you need some kind of Hadoop platform over here to analyze the data which is stored in the bucket and you would also require data warehousing because maybe at the end of the year or the Facebook does a lot of data analysis maybe at the end of the year uh, they want to find out which kind of users are accessing Facebook more what are their age limit what are their age what are the region they are accessing so that they can uh, concentrate more on those kind of features uh, what is trending all this information is taken out by shorting this information is some kind of data warehousing engine and then doing some kind of business intelligence or BI top on it so you need some business intelligence tool which can query this data analyze this data and uh, then there are reports generated out of which Facebook can take decision like next year maybe this is our strategy we will focus on this area or that area so some business decision you can drive based on what analysis results come out on this okay so this is all about is more uh, back-end service which uh, which uh, which user does not really know but this is happening there okay so far so good uh, so we having extended our architecture further now next what we have is all these photos and videos they can be directly serve over the internet because you consider this is a like a Google Drive so uh, you can you can directly uh, directly maybe stream your videos and watching pictures directly from the storage so users might, might come uh, uh, have the web browser and they may be watch whatever post uh, uh, suppose you have to post it in a, uh, a video uh, they can watch uh, that video here but sometimes your users come from using a mobile device nowadays they will watch your videos through mobile devices and uh, in that case you need to s need the same videos but in uh, probably different format that uh, that is why uh, the device uh, might play a different format of video and uh, for this typically we will need some kind of video converter in between so whenever any uploaded some video maybe they should be immediately converted into a mobile friendly format okay alright so you need some kind of computing power over here so here video converter you just converted the uploaded video into mobile uh, supported video okay so we will um, introduce that as in video converted here next all those photos and videos are typically served from as I said uh, from an external storage but you know whenever some videos got viral millions of users watch 
that video now every time if the video is fetched from this location every time video is fetched from this location this will might become a bottleneck or you may pay a price because your data is flowing out to the internet and there are a lots of users to access those videos so for to solve this problem you need something called CDN content delivery network which is nothing but uh, an, a cache engine which is caches these videos and pictures to the nearest caching devices from where the user is accessing your videos so that all users of geograph all user entire geographical locations when they want to watch the same video it is so from here it is uh, it is served from the caching engine so user experience is a low latency and better experience so in applications like Instagram and the Facebook or a YouTube largely they would have a lot of content delivery networks through which the contents are served okay so far so good we have experienced or we have extended uh, the, our architecture further now you know Facebook also sends some mobile notifications right there is a new friend request there is like some somebody like some post now for these we need and some kind of notification service right maybe you get an SMS push notification service you need to do this kind of job also it sends you emails right sometimes it is uh, disabled by default but yeah there is options to offer an email service as well further you can also chat with your friends and of this typically a queue is used uh, that is called no messaging queue uh, if you heard about uh, RabbitMQ, GMS queues uh, and so uh, so many queue services are there which enables the kind uh, which enables uh, you first in first out and that kind of data structure so for chatting maybe you require some kind of queue service as well so if we consider all these services it is uh, bare minimum kind of social media applications I am sure there must be much many more applications or components over there but uh, we are just sticking on this uh, few components right from for as of now and finally if you are want to deploy this architecture and monitor it continuously look like how many VMs are doing how my VMs are doing how my databases are doing all of my storage are doing well or not how many storage capacity is uh, I have monitoring database service these all are showing into your dashboard where you can monitor the health of your applications okay overall uh, this uh, will be your architecture and uh, this is probably uh, deployed our on on premises and now let's see if you want to do the same thing on AWS then how we will do this we will just replace this item with the AWS service right now we want to do this now on AWS so let's see first thing the private network what you see here in AWS world it is called VPC virtual private cloud 
VPC virtual private cloud VPC is a one private isolated network that AWS gives you the VPC is a network service now all these VMs that we are talking about these are nothing but an EC2 instance or EC2 machines and the disk we attached over here that is called EVS elastic block storage and they have some limited uh, limitations of maximum size so availability zone to an EVS solves your problem to the VM that uh, typically we deploy your applications and so on uh, whether the web servers are and the app servers so EC2 systems are over here and EBS storage is over there now further you can have an auto scaling enable for easy to use so you have to deploy an auto scaling over here that means if the load increases they can scale horizontally automatically and if load decrease they can scale down maybe from two machines they can go up to 10 machines or from 10 machines to come back to two machines depending on the load that you configured using the auto scaling features of AWS for your database your relational database there are a service called RDS and the NoSQL database uh, you can use uh, that a service that is called a DynamoDB for DB caches there is a service called elastic cache service and it comes with the Redis and Memcached engine further as you see there is a load balancer so in Amazon there is a service called ELB elastic load balancer service elastic load balancer service which can distribute the incoming traffic into multiple backend EC2 machines like this and for that if you want uh, to have your domain name mapping to your load balancer so you need to replace or you need to have a service that is called DNS service uh, in, uh, in AWS the DNS service is called root 53 okay great now let's talk about the other stuff that we have like for external storage it is an s3 service amazon simple storage service right which provide you to unlimited storage and you can just uh, go on uh, dumping the data and it is accessible over the internet directly and there is uh, no size limitations how much data you can store in the in your S3 buckets okay next also uh, you need some content filter over here uh, so there is a service called uh, recognition which can find out an objectable images and it can filter it out before you upload it it so the same in S3 bucket so something someone is uploading uh, something uh, objectable image or objectable videos the recognition service will determine that service determine that uh, uh, object and if it is uh, objectable then it is discarded if it is not objectable then uh, it is uploaded to the S3 bucket okay now as I said you need some kind of service where your videos format get converted to another format like mp4 or something uh, mobile friendly format now for this one option is you run some EC2 machines or EC2 instance which continuously watch the S3 buckets for new videos as the new video comes they download it and convert it and put it into the 
put it into another bucket that is one option but there isn't a better option for this like lambda service lambda is a serverless service for Amazon where you just write a code in the code you specify how maybe convert a video and you can execute this lambda function whenever there is a new upload happening in your s3 bucket a new video comes the lambda gets triggered and it will convert your video and maybe you have put a logic that put the video into another s3 bucket so now there are no servers to manage everything is taken care by lambda functions and this is scale automatically now let's talk about the clickstream analysis now for clickstream analysis there is a service called kinesis which can capture your clickstream data and then you can analyze that data and you can even further store the data into S3 bucket and you can do much more with this data which is captured right now for the spark or Hadoop platform service called EMR does like these operations it operate like uh, aggregations shorting and you can run distributed jobs or spark job pooling jobs all these you can run in this manage Hadoop cluster that is called EMR and you also need to do some ETL transactions in ETL transaction is replaced by glue so you also need some ETL transactions from your DynamoDB tables like maybe you want to do what all frames are their friends of friends who are the friends of friends what activities they are doing that you want to, that uh, that you want to continuously push a new post on your wall uh, now all this is done in a real time using a clickstream analysis and at the end of the year maybe you want all the data to be extracted converted into a different format data cataloging and then further you do some data processing using EMR so you need a glue service for doing this kind of extract transfer then finally all the data what you uh, process uh, or what you uh, data that are that uh, what data you have uh, you can store it uh, in the data warehouse service uh, which is uh, nothing but a red sheet data warehouse service is replaced by red sheet in Amazon so red sheet is a data warehousing service which can store petabyte scale of data and they can uh, they can you they can perform the analysis on that data to perform this analysis uh, and see the results you need some BI tools business intelligence tools top of the in top of it which like there are various BI tools in the market but Amazon you will use Amazon QuickSight or you can use Athena Amazon QuickSight or Athena which in a SQL query which is an SQL query interface so you can pull data from S3 bucket to perform an SQL operation on that and all those results can be viewed in a quick site you build some graphs some charts and you get insights of your database uh, uh, 
on that you will take some business decisions so it is a bi service from amazon okay so far so good we introduce a lot of aws services here now let's move to uh, this side this side as i said there is a content delivery network uh, which can cache your uh, static content and for this in amazon there is something called cloudfront service and cloudfront store or caches your data uh, in edge location like i said their edge location across 100 plus cities across the world and when you use cloudfront uh, service all your data from s3 whenever you store your data it gets uh, cached in the uh, near nearest edge locations from where you uh, your users uh, is coming and the data is uh, always served from that edge location so that the cloud phone service uh, now let's talk about uh, uh, this site so as I said you need some you need to send uh, them messages mobile push notification uh, in Amazon there is service called SNS simple notification service for that and if you want to send emails a uh, bulk emails then there is an ECS service simple email service over there now the messaging queues for chatting applications Amazon have built in uh, own queue service which is called SQS simple queue service and finally to monitor all the infrastructure how many CPUs are doing uh, what are the CPU utilizations of EC2 how is database doing all this can monitored in real time using a service called CloudWatch even uh, you can set alarm like an uh, average CPU utilization goes beyond say uh, this uh, person send an email uh, or alert to the administrator to take some actions do some auto scaling here all this can be done this cloud watch alarm here okay so I think uh, we have completely replaced uh, what we did on premises with all with the AWS services and I hope you got some idea about all these basis of AWS services okay next we uh, want to do some more AWS services and let's see some application services now as you know it is uh, a Facebook or a Twitter or any other web servers or even Amazon itself expose all their services through API calls so the different third-party applications can integrate with these applications and for that they need an REST API service where they can expose all their APIs so in Amazon you can have a managed API gateways where it uh, takes uh, care of scaling throttling everything so you just write the code for your API definitions and API, API can be deployed in your API gateway also as a mobile users uh, is increasing most of users the web users uh, you can need to manage their identities like when you develop an application you must sign up your users must sign up to your applications right and that means uh, you need uh, need to manage your users pools their access and everything and for that you need some user management service so AWS that service is called Cognito right so these are more application service that we can use here now let's move ahead and talk about the security services in this architecture 
Now as you know there are one primary service of managing all accessing in your AWS like all your AWS users what access they have what services they can use even when uh, say uh, one uh, AWS service like EC2 wants to upload a data to S3 then EC2 needs the permissions to do that now all these access and author authentications and authorization is managed using a service that is called IAM service IAM is a identity and access management service it is one of the most important service uh, for securing your AWS account as well as services next what you can also do is you can encrypt your data which is there it is stored a various storage location various storage locations like EBS elastic block storage like your disk attached to EC2 um, you can encrypt the data uh, which is stored in S3 bucket which is stored in EMR Redshift queue messages database caches all these data you can encrypt using Amazon KMS service it is a key management service so it manages all the encryption key for you you don't need to have your own secure secure locations where you can store your keys and do encryptions further as you know there is an applications will be accessed probably over the HTTPS which is the SSL enable connections because obviously if users are doing some transactions uh, or they do not uh, want to lose their important informations you would uh, secure that communications and for this you need digital certificate right so that you either deploy on load balancers or you can man, uh, deploy on a cloud form in your environment you can deploy in your load balancer you can deploy in a cloud front so far the communication is secure as for this Amazon has a service called ACM Amazon certificate manager this is take care of this kind of encryption okay next as you know uh, we can also have when the applications firewalls now those applications firewalls are called WF web application firewall now that uh, that uh, takes care of attack WAF is a takes care of your attacks if uh, can it, it can prevent a uh, like uh, cross site scripting SQL injections even the DOS attack which are uh, happening there uh, you can protect your applications from these attacks and you will typically deploy a cloud from a font or an a load balancers in front of your API gateways that we saw in an earlier slide so that you are safe as you know uh, that there is a service called AWS inspector service what it does it puts an agent inside your machines and it scans your machines for any known vulnerabilities and then it will give you a report saying like uh, you know all these machines out of these machines we found these vulnerabilities and go fix those uh, vulnerabilities everything so this is the work of inspector so this is this all about the AWS services which I already described I hope uh, everybody uh, uh, have a understanding of AWS services uh, if you have any uh, pro any uh, problem to understand please comment uh, me uh, if my video is informative please like the video and subscribe my channel see you on the next video